Welcome. Uh, this is a presentation is titled Preventing Alzheimer's and Dementia Series. This is presentation one, uh, The Power of Prediction. I am Dr. Jason Porter. I'm a naturopathic medical doctor and a board certified neurotherapist. Um, today's message is that Alzheimer's and dementia is preventable. And uh, again, I think that's been largely ignored. A lot of this information has come out over the last 20 years and it's uh, newer information and newer ideas, but that's the main topic of our discussion today. Um, this was coined, we think, by uh, Benjamin Franklin, who once said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And that is very true here. It doesn't take a lot of energy to prevent Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, once it sets in, uh, very challenging and, and nearly difficult in some cases to reverse it. So you understand that dementia is not something that happens to you overnight. It's something that happens as a process. This is time and years. And so from the age of, uh, say, 40 all the way to age 80, the risk of dementia increases as a process of aging. Um, in this section here, you have normal cognitive function, but as we progress uh, towards dementia, you'll develop subjective cognitive impairment and then mild cognitive impairment. In these categories here, you'll have no obvious symptoms. So no one will know anything is happening. As you get into this region, you could have symptoms that are mild, often overlooked, and as it progresses closer to dementia, there'll be more obvious symptoms. Uh, this is another graphical presentation of how it may occur. Uh, again, this is of somebody approximately age 45 to 50. Again, as they age in the absence of dementia, uh, they will age along this curve. There will be some mild decline in cognition. Um, but if you're going to progress towards dementia, which is represented here by the red portion of this graph, you'll see a, a, a moderate and progressive decline. Again, in these regions, you will not necessarily see uh, symptoms, and so it'll be not predictable at that point by symptoms alone. There are different things within your history that can predict whether or not you're more than likely or, or have a chance of developing dementia. So a family history of cognitive decline is a strong indicator. There are genetic susceptibilities such as apolipoprotein E, and there are many other genetic markers now that are known. If you have chronic diabetes where your insulin is elevated, that will also increase your risk. If you have other challenges in your midlife, such as uh, being overweight or you have elevated blood pressure, that will increase your risk. Um, a history of depression, uh, sleep challenges or insomnia, uh, hyperlipidemia, elevated cholesterol in essence, would increase the risk. If you've had a history of traumatic brain injuries, um, and if you have periodontitis, uh, uh, sorry, periodontitis, uh, again, a shout out to our dentist and perio specialist. And then if you've had blood barrier or do have blood barrier uh, breakdown, those are all risk factors. And in the top uh, 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 number of risk factors that people can have that increases that risk. Uh, good news is mild cognitive impairment can be predicted decades before the onset of dementia symptoms. Uh, decades one, two, three decades. Uh, and so what we're saying at this point, going back to this graph here, this is normal cognitive functioning. At this point, if we catch somebody who is developing cognitive decline, it is 100% reversible. It'll never progress to dementia or Alzheimer's. That's important to know. If we catch patients in this category before they've progressed to dementia, Current studies show that it's 85% reversible and thus preventable. And so if we could predict someone is in this range here, we could prevent dementia 85 to 100% of the time. That is pretty phenomenal. Now, again, a lot of these things are very new. And so let me tell you a few things and tools that have come up in the research in the last number of years. Uh, one is a PET scan. PET scan is a special type of scan that uh, done on the brain that can actually predict if someone is going to progress to Alzheimer's. Okay, it has some limitations. It's not available everywhere. It's not covered by insurance. You'll have exposure to radiation and uh, out-of-pocket cost is up to $6,000. But uh, that is available and um, I'm sure at some point may be covered by Medicare and others. Uh, we have also functional MRIs, a special type of uh, imaging on the brain. 
again, it has limitations, not available everywhere. It's not necessarily covered by insurance. Uh, you have exposure to contrast agents and out-of-pocket costs could be $2,000. Um, there are other tests that have been developed. Uh, Dr. Risto Vojani uh, with Immunosciences has done significant research in the regard of proteins that cross-react with tau. Tau is a protein that uh, develops or is deposited in the brain that is a, a, a hallmark uh, or marker of Alzheimer's. And he discovered in his research uh, a number of proteins uh, that cross-react with that and, and will lead to an increase of that tau protein buildup in the brain. And so if you do this type of test and you see these markers are positive for you, uh, again, then you'll be want to be more proactive. Uh, and, and 10, 20, 30 years ahead, you can see these things already happening before they're serious. But you'll see different brain proteins that you're not familiar with generally, but pathogens, for example, in the mouth or herpes type, uh, herpes virus type one. We see different growth factors, chemicals such as aluminum or phthalates, those are the plastics or mercury. Again, we see other things, if, for example, foods, eggs, lentils, tuna, scallops, casein, which is the dairy protein, alpha gliadin, which is a, 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 a gluten protein. Um, again, the nice thing is that this has been shown. We can see those protein reactions 20 years before the uh, symptoms appear of dementia or Alzheimer's. Uh, again, it's non-invasive, a simple blood draw, and uh, approximately $400 to run that uh, sample. Uh, even today, we have more tests looking at genetics. Genetics are able to, looking at hundreds of different SNPs, uh, um, predict if you're at risk for dementia. You, it allows you to make dietary and uh, changes and recommend specific supplements or even medications that may reduce your risk of progressing towards dementia. It's readily available. It's non-invasive and safe, of course. Uh, as it's just a saliva sample generally, and it's inexpensive. Testing can range from $400 to $900. Uh, even this year, uh, in the research, we have numerous blood markers that have uh, arisen too. Uh, one is glial fibrillary acidic protein. We have FOS tau 217, and also A beta 4042 ratio. The uh, A beta 4042 ratio is now offered through Quest. Uh, uh, known as the AD detect test. Uh, again, it's a serum blood draw. There's no spinal puncture required. And uh, it's simpler than a PET scan, of course, and other scans. And it uh, rules out, the only limitation, it rules out Alzheimer's disease only as the cause. So if it's not Alzheimer's causing dementia, uh, then it will miss it. But if there's a high family history risk or known risk of Alzheimer's, this would be a good blood test to consider. Um, the benefits, it's available now. Uh, to the public. It's non-invasive and safe, a simple blood draw, and it's a low cost out of pocket of $400. I want to talk a second about another method that's uh, fairly new and recently improved in the U.S. Um, uh, QEG brain mapping has been around for uh, uh, multiple decades, four or five decades. Uh, it's been used uh, to evaluate uh, brain waves uh, for determining cognitive concerns and mood concerns such as depression or anxiety. Uh, in recent studies, we've been able to uh, develop a, a predictive model uh, for Alzheimer's or dementia. This uh, graph uh, that was presented earlier and again here is a, is a report that can be developed from a brain map. Uh, the green again indicates normal cognitive decline as we age uh, or maintenance of cognition. This represents a decline or progression towards Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, as uh, some example reports of things that we have done in our office, we have an example here of a patient who on evaluation, the star would indicate where they, we found them. It predicted that they had a 73.6% probability of uh, having mild cognitive impairment. And if we look at their age, and this is based on their age, again, this would be approximately 60 years old. And so they are on that graph or on the low end of that graph. And so we see a high concern that they are progressing. Uh, that patient did report mild uh, symptoms. Uh, and, uh, and so um, again, it warranted uh, 
digging further and creating a plan for reversing uh, and improving uh, cognition. This is an example of another report, a patient who was faring a little bit better. Again, uh, they were mapped or graphed to be in this location and with a probability of 50.9%. Again, it uh, wasn't perfect, but in this case, the patient is not having re any reported symptoms. Um, so what to know at this point based on uh, the current information we have? One is you do have the power over the future of your cognition. This is not a wait and see game or hope and see type of scenario. You can evaluate your brain health with personalized imaging, and that's a pretty exciting blood and genetic test. And, um, and also, of course, with QEG brain mapping. The advantages or the limitations of uh, QEG brain mapping, it's not necessarily available everywhere. Uh, it's not covered by insurance. Benefits are you have no exposure to radiation or contrast agents, um, and the out-of-pocket cost generally is around $450. And so here's some ideas on what you can do based on your age. Uh, the brain mapping has an idea of, of predicting of Alzheimer's. The data is for 50, patients 50 years and greater. So if you're less than 50 and have a concern, there are blood tests. Uh, we label that a blood regeneration lab panel, but there are numerous blood tests that we evaluate, which includes your hormones and nutrients and inflammation and cardiovascular risk and diabetes risk. We also can do an Alzheimer's link, uh, uh, links panel, uh, which is predicting if you're cross-reacting with proteins in the body that could be affecting your uh, blood-brain barrier. And we can do genetic testing to predict your risk. If you're greater than 50 years of age, we do recommend doing a QEG brain map. Um, uh, that will create a baseline of where your cognition is currently and, and raise, uh, help us to understand is what concern and level of treatment or intervention we should engage in. And again, these are able to predict dementia 10, 20, even up to 30 years before its onset. Uh, we will do uh, specific lab work, again, to evaluate and support the metabolism and the, uh, the body, and we can do genetic uh, testing and uh, uh, autoimmune or uh, Alzheimer's links panel. And that concludes our discussion today. We hope that you find this information useful and will choose to be more proactive about preventing uh, cognitive decline in your life.